Hello, welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. Hope you all had Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, and I also hope that you had a safe and happy New Year's. This week, I am taking a look at Deus Ex Human Revolution, one of the best games of last year, if not the best game of last year. I'm not going to do my usual blow-by-blow -blow summary of the game and talk about the in-depth elements of the plot, because the game's relatively new. I figure the spoiler statute of limitations is still in effect. Oh, and if you're wondering why I'm not wearing my usual hat, that's because I got a hat for Christmas. How's it set? Looks mighty cunning, don't you think? Man walks down the street with a hat like this, you know he ain't afraid of nothing. Alright then, let's get on with the review. The game's story follows Adam Jensen, an ex-cop in Detroit who is working as head of security for Seraph Industries, a manufacturer of cybernetic augmentations in the not-too-distant future. When an attack on Seraph Industries kills Adam's ex-girlfriend, Dr. Megan Reed, and her research team, and maims Adam, Adam is forced to undergo extensive cybernetic augmentation to survive. Now, with his new cyborg abilities, Adam must investigate the cause of the attack and the forces working in the shadows seeking to control humanity's fate. This is, well, a deus ex game. The game allows players the option to go through missions taking an overt path or a stealthy path, and to take down enemies either lethally or non-lethally, depending on their preference. In addition to the main plot missions, there are numerous side missions that players can take on, allowing them to gain additional experience points and money in the game, and further fleshing out the game's plot and fleshing out the world of the setting as a whole. These missions are completed basically in the same ways as the main storyline missions, though some of additional options for resolving them through talking your way through problems, rather than just using the more combative options. Now, I mentioned experience points earlier. As with earlier games in the series, this game is something of a hybrid of your first-person shooter and your role-playing game, though it's not as role-playing game heavy as the first game in the series. As the player levels up through completing missions and objectives and that sort of thing, he gains unlocks for various cybernetic abilities. This can range from being able to have, have improved hacking skills, more inventory slots, the ability to fall from greater heights without damage, or even being able to basically read a person's blood pressure and that sort of thing to tell what conversational options would be the best for that person. All of this stuff can be either attained through leveling up, or you can purchase additional ability unlocks through um, various stores and shops in the game. All of these things really help make the game's experience more diverse and allow for more replay values. One time you can go through the game with your character specced entirely for combat, the other time your game character can be specced out to be a sneaky, hacking, um, stealth machine. Visually, this game is stunning. While this game was already in development at Eidos Montreal before Eidos was bought out by Square Enix, I can't help but get the feeling that when Square Enix bought out Eidos, this game got, as a side effect, a massive graphical upgrade, because I see little elements of the kind of visual artistry that Square brings to the table in all of their games in this game. From little touches like Adam Jensen's shoulder pads and cutscenes, to the clothing on various characters, to, in particular, the wardrobe worn by Eliza, the news anchor, in the various televisions you see throughout the game. This is just, frankly, one of the best-looking games I have seen in quite some time. It is, while it still kind of leans a bit towards the brown, it's a different kind of brown than you see with, like, Gears of War and that sort of thing. It's less grit and more polished, with a bit of fog and haze to it to give it that real noir, proper cyberpunk feel. The story itself is excellent, not just for a game, but in general, as an overall story. The game's story is a really good example of what I like to call transhumanist cyberpunk. This is sort of a subgenre of science fiction focusing on a society in transition to a transhumanist society. I'll go into this a little bit more on another video, but suffice it to say, 
this is a little subgenre of science fiction that is slowly growing, and I'm glad to see that this that the themes of this genre have been incorporated into this game and incorporated very, very well. Now, Deus Ex is not without its problems. The game's story basically runs into a little bit of baggage from the fact that this is a Deus Ex game. The original Deus Ex was based around the concept that all of the non-racist, non-bigoted conspiracy theories from the 90s and so forth were true. FEMA was planning to round up people into camps, and the government's keeping track of secret information on us. The Illuminati is real. Majestic 12 is real. The Bilderberg group is running the world from behind the scenes. The Knights Templar, all this stuff. All of those wacko conspiracy theories were true, except for the ones which were overtly anti-Semitic and the ones which were overtly bigoted. So, no... Protocols of the Altars of Zion, no gay Illuminati, whatever. The problem is, is that made the original Deus Ex very much an artifact of its times. If you weren't familiar with the 90s conspiracy theory culture, which was kind of popular at the time, or at least people like to joke about it and think about it, hence shows like The X-Files, then when you play Deus Ex now... It feels, plot-wise, kind of dumb. Like, everyone in this in the world is crazy Glenn Beck fans. Or crazy other conspiracy, conspiracy theorist fans. And when with Deus Ex Human Revolution, because they're stuck with that mythos, with that universe, particularly by making this a prequel to the original Deus Ex, it means they gotta fit that stuff in there. And thus, when it does come up in the story, it sounds dumb. It sounds really dumb. And it does hurt the narrative somewhat. They do try to keep it to a minimum. They don't go as in-your-face about it as the original game, which, which helps considerably. But it does hurt the game somewhat. The other significant problem with the game is several boss fights. With the exception of these boss fights, you can go through the entire game without killing anyone. Mind you, I didn't feel so inclined to go through the game without killing anyone myself, because there were several people in the game, particularly on the bad guy side, who engaged in actions which made me feel like they needed killing. But still, I did like that the option was there. However, these boss fights require you to kill your enemy, and... They require a lot of running and gunning and shooting and that sort of thing. If you've basically made your character to be more of a hacky um, social machine, when you get to these fights, you're kind of out of luck unless you crank the difficulty down all the way. And even then, you'll run into some problems. Should these have been changed? Absolutely. I would have much rather preferred there was a way to talk your way through these, either through looking up kill phrases for these characters, like in the original Deus Ex, or through some sort of environmental thing, like hacking a terminal to send out sentry bots to gun down your enemy, or something like that. Just some other way to handle this outside of just a straight fight would have been much more preferable. I'd love to go on a more in-depth look at the story, but because this game is so recent, you really need to experience the story without spoilers. I wouldn't want to take away from, well, experiencing the twists and turns of the plot and going through and letting you decide how this story goes on your own. Particularly since there is a lot of player choice involved in the narrative, putting my spin on things or my review take on it wouldn't have the same effect. It'd be like doing a plot recap for Mass Effect, in particular Mass Effect 2, where there's enough plot options where depending on how you do the loyalty missions and that sort of thing, and who you take on them, it will really affect how the narrative for the story turns out. So, well, should, I, should you play this game? Absolutely. This is, honestly, a great game. I don't mean just like, oh, a good game, better than good, Less than excellent. I wouldn't say this as a eight or a nine. I'm going to give this a scale. This is a ten. This game is an absolute ten. 
this, frankly, is one of the best games of this console generation. If not, well, since the first Deus Ex, I would put this equal in the series to the original Deus Ex. You will enjoy this game. If you like role-playing games, if you like games with actual narrative decisions that you can control, if you like games with a strong, powerful narrative at all, if you like first-person shooters with good controls, if you like cyberpunk, you will like this game. Honestly, this game makes me wish there was a category of the Hugo Awards for video games. Because I think this game should be nominated, and I would like to think that it would win it. But, no such luck. So, next week's review, well, next week is an off week, so I'm going to do a video. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do then, as far as I have some things lined up. But if a big news story comes up, I'm going to talk about that more. But, until next time, I'll see you then, and thanks for watching.